and welcome back to Silicon Sounds, audio for the rest of us. Today it is my extreme pleasure to review the Mangard Zens Up. Please excuse me if I pronounce the company name wrong. This is a wonderful earphone and I don't want to diminish any of its uh, beautiful aspects. Uh, so what we have here is an IM that after spending some time with it, I found it really easy to classify. It's something akin to a safe haven or home port, a comfortable pair of socks. This along with the likes of the High Senior Mega 5P, the High Senior T2, and the Yanyan Canyon occupy a very elite place in my list of earphones I've listened to. They're the type of earphone you go back to time and time again after being in the wild, quote unquote, listening to all manner of IEMs and sources uh, doing reviews and whatnot. You want to come back to a comfortable place, your home harbor, as it were. A sort of reset for your audio sensibilities. Uh, this is not to say that they're all tuned the same way. They absolutely are not. Uh, the secret sauce here is how they allow the listener to once again connect with the music on a more intimate level. Uh, getting out of the way and not being a hindrance to do so. Uh, sporting seven drivers per side, including one dynamic driver. Just pick this up here. Four Sunyan, very high quality, balanced armatures, and two Sunyan EST drivers. The Zen's Up means business. Absolutely. Beautiful IEM as well, we can see. Definitely means business. As impressive as this tribrid configuration is on paper, the real test is how these actually sound. Uh, that's a lot of driver tech pushed into a very small area, and pulling it together will take a lot of skill, in particular with engineering and with tuning, of course. But I think Mangard really knows what they're doing, and the Zen's Up is a testament to their tuning prowess. Very easy to drive. The Up doesn't does really benefit from more capable sources, and it absolutely does because of its ability to resolve um, the signal coming into it. Very resolving uh, set of uh, IEMs. So it makes a lot of sense to pair these with a capable source, although they will sound pretty good, uh, even off a cell phone per se, but really, 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 uh, that would be damning them to uh, subpar, in my opinion, uh, sound. Really want to pair them with uh, a source uh, that is much more capable. Time spent, of course, tip rolling, cable, and source selection will allow the listener to extract all the performance that this Mangrid IEM offers. This ends up really synergized with a slightly warmer source and sounded very good with the iffy HipDAC and uh, Zudu MT602, for example. So let's talk a little bit about specs. So we have two EST, four <coughs> BA drivers, and one dynamic driver per side. That's seven drivers per side. Frequency range, 20 to 80 kilohertz. Sensitivity, 110 decibels. Uh, impedance is 20 ohms. Distortion, 1%, plus or minus 0.2%. Take that as what it means. Um, comes with a regular 1.2 meter cable, very nice one by the way, uh, 0.78 millimeter 2 pin. Uh, the default plug is a 2.5 millimeter balance plug and the 3.5 and 4.5 plugs are included. Uh, nozzle diameter is 4.8 millimeters, so we're talking about a nozzle that's quite fat. May not protrude as much, some people might find the fitment an issue. I absolutely did not. The Mangrids ends up, let's talk about build fit and quality. It is on the larger size side. Uh, it's a little bit chunky. We can see that's a lot of tech in there. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up. It's a very dark housing. Hard to pick up what's inside. Build quality is excellent. Very attractive resin shell being beautifully finished. Um, it was a loner, so I don't have all the included accessories, but searching YouTube, uh, and Google did show me what the accessories come with, and definitely the retail presentation is uh, a testament and is commensurate with this asking price of $700 US. Sound. What does this thing sound like? 
Well, it is a Harman tuned IEM for the most part. It's a slight V, uh, a little bit more emphasis on the deep sub bass and the treble, of course. Very, very, very smoothly tuned. Uh, again, um, in combination with the EST drivers, we're talking a lot of technicalities here. Quite linear in the bass with excellent control. Let's talk about the bass here. There's a slight emphasis in the sub bass heard in tracks that call for it. In fact, it could be more than a little bit slight, but on the majority of tracks where the sub bass is not overly present, it stays in its place. Bass quality is very good with detail and texture retrieval being outstanding. Circumstance by Wayman Tisdale, one of my go-to tracks, had excellent clarity and separation in the bass while retaining the crisp texturing. Angel, if you've ever had a chance to listen to Massive Attack's Angel, has a throbbing, driving bass line. Very, very good track. Had excellent clarity and separation in the bass while retaining the crisp texturing. The bass in that track has a texture to it. Uh, that some lesser earphones just make it sound like throbbing bass doesn't reveal the actual texture and detail in that bass line. Sounded equally impressive with a great sense of control and detail. Poem of the Chinese drawn by Hawkman Yim. Incredible track. Uh, extremely well recorded. Uh, beautiful track of drums. Had it offered visceral impact while retaining impressive control, highlighting the Zen's Up impressive Again, transient capabilities in the low end. Little to no overhang on hardcore bass transients like in that track. Very well controlled. You can, you can, it's palpable the, the, the reverberations of the skin after they've been struck by this uh, master drummer from China. Fantastic track. Sounded beautiful on the Zen's Up. Let's talk, uh, well, really this is not an IM for bass heads. But for those who appreciate high quality bass, the Zen's Up does indeed satisfy. Bass is fast and tight, adding just a touch of warmth in the lower mid-range. The Up relays what's in the track without added seasoning, sounding very pleasing and natural in the low end with all the power needed on tap when the source material calls for it. I would say that the bass presentation of the Mangard Zen's Up is very, very good. Very good. Mid-range. Uh, the mid-range of the Mangard uh, Zen's Up is more intimate than recessed, and it's also fairly balanced with a measured emphasis as we move up to the upper mids and the presence region, heard mostly in female vocals, but very tastefully done. Macro and micro detail retrieval is excellent, as is layering and separation, creating a very open and unrestricted canvas. Uh, it's, it's interesting, I've had some IEMs come through my ears in the last few months that had a very pleasant sounding mid-range but when you find one that has that pleasant sound and is also very open sounding it's a revelation harshness is nowhere to be found and the up has that rare ability to pull the listener into the music detailed yet smooth is how i like to describe the mid-range transients are handled wonderfully with a sharp attack and a natural decay Note weight is also very good, being bested by a small number of other standout earphones such as the Yanyan Canon, uh, but still being natural and satisfying. Timber is also well done, with the instrument sounding natural. Really, this is a combination of skillful tuning combined with the quality Sunyun BAs. Really, uh, the expertise of Mangard is on full display here. No Worries by Robert Glasper, one of my favorite tracks period, but also one of my favorite tracks to test IMs with. Uh, check it out. Robert Glasper Trio, No Worries, also Maiden Voyage, another good song or track to use. Showed front and center the excellent layering capabilities combined with the organic playback of the Zen's Up. Every instrument in this masterful trio was clearly heard in their own space, yet they were cohesive. Chocolate Chip Trip by Tool, put on display the impressive transit delivery with, him, with equally impressive or more impressive impact and control. Uh, male vocals have a touch of warmth, just a touch, with clean delivery that is impressive. Tenderhearted Lover by John Stoddart sounded as good as I've ever heard this great track sound. 
The emotions expressed in his voice was very easy to connect with, and it pulls you right into the song. Sweet Love by one of my favorite female vocalists, Anita Baker, offered the same experience, this time with a slight emphasis in the upper mid-range that is tastefully done. I should point out here that um, the Zen's Up is actually quite forgiving of so-so quality recorded material. I mean, very poorly recorded material. You're going to hear that it's poorly recorded. Uh, but when it comes to um, albums that aren't necessarily the pinnacle of performance with respect to recording, uh, it's quite forgiving. The mid-range of the Mangard Zen's Up is a gem, combining an exceptionally clean detail, delivery, yet not sounding clinical, and retaining that organic sound that pulls the listener in again and again. High praise. Let's move to the treble. Look a little bit at the nozzle here. Very nicely done. Very clean design. Two pin. Very clean design. Up, left. Very nice. Treble. is also well extended with excellent clarity, yet not sounding sterile. There is ample air and sparkle, yet the Zen's Up does not stray from being natural and avoid sounding over-embellished. So many uh, hymns I've listened to have that extra bite in the treble to make it sound like it's detail. Brightness does not equal detail. There's no excess splashiness here to try and fool the listener with fake detail. There's no sense of missing anything in the treble. Whatever's there, you're going to hear it. Everything that's in the track is going to reach your ears. Vance in Place 12 AM by Ronnie Jordan sounded very engaging. With all the nuances laid bare, in fact, this really made me sit up and take notice. I had just finished listening to another costly set and realized that the Zen's Up was just that much more revealing and more organic. Imaging and soundstage. Well, the Magrid Zen's Up offers a wide enough soundstage with uh, lesser dimensions of width and height. Imaging is definitely pinpoint as per its layering and separation capabilities. Stimula. The Coltrane by Hugh Masekela, the late, great Hugh Masekela, sounded more intimate than expansive, but with well-defined instrument placement and environment cues. So with respect to soundstage, the Mangard Zen's Up is not the most 3D holographic I've heard. Uh, it is uh, very natural in terms of soundstage. Again, maybe bested by a small number of other earphones in this range. But when you're talking about uh, listening experience, we're not just talking about one metric, we're talking about how everything comes together. Um, so we'll continue with that, but still well done. Now let's talk about verses here. I'm gonna put in an earphone that I uh, have to thank again, it is for allowing me to be an early reviewer and tester of the MS-5. With respect to bass, each is very good. Uh, in my opinion, this is the strength of the MS-5, is its base. The MS-5 has a fantastic low end with great impact and impressive control. Likewise, the up, even if not having as prominent an output out the gate, um, each is beautifully tuned in this regard. If I was forced to make a choice, it would be based solely on my personal preference and not the technical capability of either as they're both very good in the bass department. I'm happy with both of them actually. I would pick by a hair, probably the MS-5 by the smallest of margins if we're just looking at the bass as a sole entity, but it's not. Again, both of these I'd be super happy with their bass performance moving forward. But if I had to choose by hair, when it comes to the mid-range, things gets more gets a lot more complex. The MS-5 has a fantastic lower mid-range. Uh, reproduction of male voices here is, is very, very good. Um, but suffers in tonality and organics as we move to the upper mid-range. Uh, really, it's almost like two different animals here. Um, the up has no such weakness, is even keeled from the lower mid-range to the upper mid-range. Uh, and it's just more consistent in its performance and consistently satisfying with its mid-range presentation. 
It's both more natural with superior timber and just more involving. It pulls you in to the music as opposed to the MS-5, which I found was very hard or less easy to get pulled into the music because of that disconnect between the lower mid-range and the upper mid-range. Moving to the treble, the Zen's Up is clearly superior to the MS-5. It's, um, uh, it's not even a competition. Both offer above average detail retrieval, both macro and micro, but the Mangard offer, offering just excels in the metrics of naturalness and organics, both areas where the MS-5 it was found wanting in the treble. My pick between these two is very easy, easily won one. My choice is the Mangard Zen's Up, hands down, the one I'd reach for all the time if I had only these two. Conclusion. Get this out of the way. Conclusion. Like a pair of favorite socks or a well-used security blanket, the Mangard Zen's Up is an IEM that I can see many people keeping within arm's length when they just want to connect to the music and just want to listen to music, not being critical, but just wanting to relax. After a long week at work or days on end listening to new gear, the up is a safe refuge, a safe haven of excellent sound that will keep you coming back. Mangard have much to be proud of with this IEM. It has excellent sound and is both well-built and beautiful to look at. The Mangard Zen's Up gets a very strong recommendation from Silicon Sounds. I want to thank you very much for joining me today for this video review. Uh, like and subscribe. Tell other people about the channel. Uh, also, I have a blog. The link will be in the description uh, where all these reviews are in type. Also very present on various Facebook groups. I want to thank you very much. See you soon with another review.